Aloha, this is Heidi at ECPZ. In this video, I'm going to show you all about wool diaper covers. First, I'll start by telling you why I personally love using wool as a diaper cover. Then I'll show you a few styles of wool diaper covers. And then I'll answer some frequently asked questions about using wool as a diaper cover. So first, the reasons why I love to use wool diaper covers are that it's a natural material so it's biodegradable. I also love that wool is breathable, and what that means is when your baby sweats, the vapor can escape out of the wool diaper cover. So where we live, it's really hot, and if I put my baby in a diaper cover that has a plastic layer in it, like polyurethane laminate, it can trap the sweat, and then the diaper might get feeling kind of wet and moist even if my baby hasn't peed. But with wool, that sweat can evaporate out of the cover and leave my baby feeling dry. Also, wool diaper covers don't get smelly if you use them over and over again the way that a diaper cover with a plastic layer in it would. Um, I really like using a wool flap wrap at night, so if we have a pee miss and I don't change the diaper right away, the cover doesn't get stinky. And also, if I use one wool cover over and over and over again throughout the day, it still smells fine because the lanolin oil in the wool helps to neutralize in a urine and so it removes the odor. Two other reasons that I really like um, wool diaper covers is that they're super soft so it's really comfortable when I'm holding my baby and my baby's wearing a soft material and they can be very cute. I really like um, this bubble shorts style of cover and also something like a soaker can look cute as bloomers under a dress. And finally, one of the reasons that I love using wool is it works both as the diaper cover and as clothing. So my baby can be using this to give the waterproof protection over her diaper, but it's also her pair of shorts at the same time. And since we like to be very minimalist, I like that that allows us to just buy wool shorts without having to buy a diaper cover plus shorts and pants for my baby as well. Now I'm going to show you these styles of wool diaper covers that I have on the table. Most of them are made from wool interlock, and that refers to the way that the wool fabric is made. So interlock is a machine knit wool where it's double-sided, so both, both sides are smooth. Unlike some fabrics that have a wrong side and a right side, um, interlock looks the same on both sides. And for wool, it's one of the thicker types of wool materials, so it works great for making diaper covers. In contrast, I'm wearing a wool jersey shirt, and this is a much thinner type of material. So to start with, this is a newborn size Baby Greens classic cover, and it snaps on the side. Baby Greens also has a wool wrap cover that comes and snaps the front. Uh, for the newborn phase, I really like a cover that you can wrap around your baby and it either snaps or closes with hook and loop closure, which is like Velcro or Aplex because it's easier to get this style of a cover onto your baby rather than wearing a type that needs to be pulled up for a newborn. So we used these ones during the newborn phase. And this was my favorite for a wool cover for a newborn, the baby greens. The leg elastic was really good on it so it helped contain any poop misses. This is a wool flap wrap. Flap wraps are a drop flap style diaper that are specifically made for babies who use the potty because it's easy to flap it down and allow them the opportunity to use the potty and then put it back up. If you'd like to see more about flap wraps, you can watch my video on easy cloth diapers for EC. This is called a soaker and it's from Truly Caris. So a soaker is pretty much just a pull on style diaper cover. To me, these are easier once you get past like a few months old and your baby's a little more um, in control and not just squiggly fluffing everywhere, then it's easier to use a pull-on style. And I especially like pull-on style for toddlers where they're standing up because then you can have them do a standing diaper change and that's a lot easier to get them to cooperate than having them lay laying down. And like I said, this is from the store Truly Caris. I will include my link in the description box below, and if you shop through my link, you can receive 15% off your first order. This style is referred to as shorties. They're like little board shorts, 
I got these here locally from the Little Green Honu. They were a special order with the little Honu turtle on the side. Um, I don't think she's stocking any items in her shop right now, which is really too bad because I liked her designs. This is a pair of extra small bubble shorts from Truly Caris. And this is a pair of medium bubble shorts from Rainy Day Woolies on Etsy. I'll link to them below as well. I just really like the bubble short style because it looks a little bit more like clothing if they're wearing this with a t-shirt than the soaker. I personally like the soakers underneath dresses for my daughter. But you know, boys can wear soakers as well and they can wear the shorties too. And then there's some other styles that I don't have to show you. Longies would go all the way down to their ankles, like pants or trousers. Um, footies would also cover their feet as well. And skirties could be something like a soaker that also has an attached skirt around it too. And I just wanted to mention in covers like these where they're made with the interlock wool, it usually also contains about 5% spandex or lycra to allow it to stretch a bit because otherwise these wouldn't be as stretchy as knit covers. So it's usually about a 95% wool, 5% spandex mix. Now I'm going to answer some frequently asked questions about wool diaper covers. I included an index in the description box below this video. So if you have a specific question that you wanna jump ahead to, you can check that index for the timestamp and skip on ahead. The first question is, do wool diaper covers work in hot weather or during the summertime? And the answer is yes. We live in Hawaii, so it's a hot, humid climate here. And that's one of the reasons that I prefer wool, actually, is because it allows the vapor, the sweat, to escape out of the diaper cover, and that keeps my baby a lot more comfortable. I've tried some diaper covers like Thirsties that have PUL on the inside, and it just trapped in the sweat. So even if my baby hadn't peed in the diaper, it got, um, moist in there and his skin was getting kind of pinkish with marks just from everything being so trapped inside. So I do really like wool for hot weather. Some people even have their kids wear wool longies um, and you can also wear merino wool jersey clothing in hot weather too. It's a type of clothing that's great for both cold because it can keep your child warm and it's also good for hot because in hot weather it will keep them cool. The next question I'd like to address is what do you use underneath a wool diaper cover? So I've been calling these covers, they're not the entire diaper, this is just like the water repellent part that you put on the outside. Underneath you need to use some type of absorbent cloth diaper. So I just have some examples here to show you. This is a really small prefold. So I used these preemie prefolds laying inside this Baby Green's newborn cover. Um, newborn size prefolds would also work great. And since this cover fits so snugly, I could just trifold it like that and lay it inside the cover. If you were using something like a pull-on style, then you would first need to fasten on a prefold. So you would wrap the prefold around your baby and you would fasten it using something like a snappy or this is a bandy where it's an elastic band, you put it around their waist and you can fasten on a prefold like that. I personally don't like to have to have an extra step of fastening on the diaper before putting on the cover, but if you don't mind as much, you can definitely do that. Very similar to a prefold, another option is a flat. So it's just a really big square cloth diaper. And again, you would use something like a snappy and there's all kinds of different folds. You can look up videos for how to fold a flat diaper. This is a flap wrap pad. So since I showed you earlier that we use these flap wrap diapers, this is just pad folded and laid inside the flap wrap. A fitted diaper is another option. We use some fitted diapers during the newborn phase. So a lot of people really like pairing fitted diapers with pull-on style wool covers because the fitted diapers have elastic around the legs so it can help contain the pee and poop inside the diaper and then when you pull on the diaper cover, you're not as likely to get any of the mess on the wool if 
you're using something like a fitted diaper underneath. What I personally use under is not actually a diaper, but I use cloth training pants. These are under the Nile organic cotton training pants. And our family practices elimination communication, which means that our babies start using the potty as early as birth. So I change after every pee or poop miss. So I don't need a super thick diaper, like a fitted diaper with lots and lots of layers. It's okay for us to just use much thinner training pants that have a little bit of absorbency, but not as much as a diaper. And during the toddler phase, it's great because you can pull on the training pants and pull on a wool soaker over, and then your child can stand up during this process. And as a toddler, they can also start learning to push both of these layers down together. So those are some of the options. I really like using natural fibers like 100% cotton or cotton hemp mix underneath the natural wool. Then you can have an all natural diapering solution and that helps with the breathability and just keeping their skin comfortable. The next question is how often do I wash wool diaper covers? Personally, I've been washing them about every two weeks. You can go about every two to four weeks. Um, if there's any poop that gets on the diaper cover, I wash it immediately, spot clean it at first, and then try to do a full wash that day or the next day. Also, if it feels like it's no longer containing the moisture, then that's a sign that it needs to be washed and lanolized again. Or after there's been um, a wet diaper, if the cover feels a little moist and then you air it out and it still kind of smells like urine, that's a sign to wash it again. Usually for us, what happens is after a couple weeks, we get a little poop on the cover, so I go ahead and I wash it. The next question is, are wool diaper covers waterproof? I wouldn't call them 100% waterproof, like the way a diaper cover that contains a plastic layer is, but I would call them water repellent. So once you've lanolized them, which I'll show you how to wash and lanolize a wool cover, and lanolin is just the oil that naturally occurs on the sheep's fur, and that helps to repel water. Like if a sheep was out in a rainstorm, the water wouldn't soak all the way through and get them really cold. It would kind of bounce off their fur. So I'll show you really quickly what that looks like to pour a little bit of water on a wool cover. So I've taken this wool soaker and turned it inside out and I've got a little shot glass here with some water in it. So I'm just gonna pour it on so you can see how the water kind of beads up and it just kind of runs off. Do you see how those little drips run off? So if it's not getting fully saturated, if it's just getting peed on, then the wool repels the water and allows your absorbent layer, like this pre-fold I have down here, to absorb it. Now, again, wool is not 100% waterproof. If you had a really saturated diaper and then you had a lot of compression on it, like your baby was sitting in the car seat and so the wool was getting pressed against the liquid for a long time, then eventually, yes, the water could seep through. And also the way I said that wool is breathable means that the water vapor can pass through the wool and evaporate out the other side. So it's not 100% waterproof, but you can see this water is just running right off the cover. So I would call wool diaper covers water repellent or water resistant. The other top two questions that get asked are, how do you wash wool diaper covers and how do you lanolize wool diaper covers? So we'll head into the bathroom and I'll show you real quick how I personally wash and lanolize them. I'm not saying this is the perfect way. I'm not really an expert on wool. I'm just somebody who loves wool and I've been using it more and more with my second baby. And so this is what works for me. And like I said before, I change the backup underneath, which is usually cloth training pants, right away after my baby pees or if there's been a poop miss, I deal with it right away. And so I don't have to use as much lanolin as some people might. Um, also with interlock covers, they don't require as much lanolin as if you're using a hand knit cover. So keep that in mind as well. It takes a little just experimenting and figuring out what works best for your family. Okay, so for example, I'm gonna show you how I would wash this pair of wool bubble shorts. To wash them, I turn them inside out. If they had any kind of mark on them and needed to be spot cleaned, I would use this bunch of farmer's stain stick. Just get the spot wet, a little bit of this, and then 
use a kind of pinching motion so that you don't agitate it and you don't rub it into the wool more. But this doesn't actually have any spots in it right now. We're just going to give it a full wash. So you start by filling up the sink with tepid water that's similar to lukewarm water or room temperature water. Basically when it's wool, you don't want to shock the fibers with too hot or too cold of water. So fill up a bath. I'm going to be using Euclid Wool Wash. This does have a little bit of lanolin in it. So some people prefer to use one without lanolin to really strip all the lanolin out of the cover. Some options are Unicorn Beyond Clean or Fiber Wash. I've never personally used those since I only like to use really gentle cleansers. So I'm just going to use this Euclid that has some lanolin, so knowing that it won't completely remove the lanolin, I added about half a cap full, and I'm just going to get her bubble up. And then submerge it. Oh, you can kind of see how the water runs off the wool right now. And you just want to be gentle with your wool. Okay, so we've let it soak here for about 20 minutes. With this Euclid wool wash, you don't have to rinse it. Um, but sometimes if it's been really soiled, like maybe got some poop on it, and I then I might rinse it out if I know I'm going to re-lanolize it again. I normally do lanolize it every time I wash it. So again, just tepid water, not too hot. And I could rinse it out just a little bit. As soon as I'm done with this washing step, we're gonna proceed on to lanolizing it. And again, be gentle, squeezing any water out. You don't wanna twist it or wring it because it can get out of shape. Okay, now I have this little mason jar I use for lanolizing. I'm gonna use some of this now pure lanolin. I don't know if this is the best option, but it's just something I got off of Amazon. So I'll link it below. So I use a chopstick and take a scoop out. Give me about the size of two peas. We set it in the jar. Now I'm going to bring some boiling hot water. I learned the first time I tried lanolizing that if your water's not hot enough, then it won't dissolve the lanolin enough. Well, it won't emulsify the lanolin enough. And then, because it's an oil, it's just floating on top. It's not actually mixing into the water. So in order to get it to separate into the water, you need to use something, some kind of soap. So again, we're going to use the Euclid. And I just try to do a tiny, pour a tiny bit in. It's actually more than I would usually use. Okay, and then put the lid on. This is super hot water, so I use hot pads. And I shake it. Basically, see how it's turning white? You want to try to get that lanolin emulsified into the hot water, so spread out into tiny little droplets all throughout the water. And that's what the soap is helping to mix them. So we've got white mixture here. I'm going to take this and pour it into a sink of tepid water. Okay, so I've got my lanolin mixture, and I'm going to pour it into a new sink full of tepid water. Put that all in there. And then mix it up so the lanolin gets distributed. So it should be milky white. And you don't want to see globs floating on top. If you do, you might get marks on your wool. What I do is I kind of let the go through the fabric, but that's just kind of my way of doing it to make sure the lanolin's really getting on the fabric. Okay, so you may need some kind of weight to hold it down. I could use this and just fill it with water and use it to hold it down. We'll leave that there for about 20 minutes. Okay, so you can just let the water drain through the fabric so that the lanolin will get onto the wool. 
Okay, now just gently squeeze some water out. Again, you don't want to wring it, you don't want to agitate the wet fibers, or you might felt your wool. And now we're going to go roll it in a towel. Now to remove some more of the moisture, place it in a towel. Roll the towel up and then just squeeze it. Helps to take out some more of the water. And now it's ready to go air dry. And now we leave it on a drying rack overnight to dry. Now I want to show you real quickly a couple other accessories you could use along with wool diaper covers. This is a wool wet bag. So most wet bags are made with a polyurethane laminate plastic layer to make them waterproof. But this is just all wool. This is a thick felted wool. It's nice and soft too. And so if you want to go the all natural route and you don't want a wet bag that has a plastic layer in it, you can use wool. And this would also be something that would be really easy to sew yourself since it's basically a big rectangle. This one is from Organic Caboose. I'll provide a link below. And you might also want to use a wool changing pad. I use this one with a pre-fold on top for changing my baby's diaper. Or you can also use a wool puddle pad for times when you want to let your baby be diaper free. You can put down a cloth pre-fold or a receiving blanket and have your baby lie on top of it and a vanilized wool puddle pad will work as a waterproof barrier. This one's from Little Bunny Bear. I'll link to her shop as well. If you'd like to learn more about elimination communication and early potty training, please subscribe and come visit our Easy Peasy blog. Thanks for watching.